There are many different CPU options available for any platform. Today I wanted to take a look at a low power CPU option like a Xeon L SKU and compare it to a more high performance option and see how the power consumption differs at different levels of load and to see if you can kind of turn a high power version into a low power CPU with some tweaking. For my testing, I used LGA 2011 CPUs in a dual socket configuration. I had a Xeon E5 2640L as my low power 6 core SKU and then a Xeon E5 2690 as my high performance 8 core SKU. I tested it in three different systems running different OS's to see if the difference of systems would make a change here and I did all my power testing from the wall socket. The idle power consumption on the low power versus the high performance chip is roughly the same showing that the TDP increase doesn't really affect you when you're running at idle. And this is likely due to C-states and other power management solutions that turn the cores off almost when it's running at idle. So having extra high clocked cores doesn't matter because they aren't running anyways. What does matter is the system. I had a 50% increase in power from my lowest power system that I did testing on to my highest power system. This likely was due to the higher power system having additional parts like a quadro draft graphics card and four mechanical hard drives spinning. And also for comparison, I ran two different low load tests. One of them was pinning two cores to the max in a VM. And this saw a much bigger power delta than my other low load test, which was playing a 4K YouTube video and have it all decoding on the CPU. And this is likely due to the fact that with my two thread task, if it can do it faster, it will do more work. And since the high power SKU turbos higher, it will just keep doing more work than the low power SKU. On the other hand, the YouTube playback workload had a fixed amount of work. A faster system doesn't decode more frames than a slower system does when playing a YouTube video. While the higher clocked CPU was less efficient, it could spend more time at idle because it gets the work done faster. This does still demonstrate that picking a CPU that's the right size for your workload will lower power consumption. So if you have a fixed workload, buying a massive CPU that's going to sit underutilized will often hurt power consumption because it's less efficient than a lower end SKU running closer to its max load. Now let's take a look at maximum load. And this is where we see the massive power difference between the different CPUs. This power difference was very large, and it actually looked a little bit interesting to me. So what I did is I took the difference of power consumption at the wall and compared it to the difference of TDPs on the two CPUs. And the wall power consumption difference was about 20 to 50% more than the CPU TDP difference would make you think, which is kind of interesting. Now there is likely some inefficiencies due to the power supplies and other parts of the system, but it looks like the TDP really isn't a great measure of max load either. It is a general indicator that of a given series of CPUs, a higher TDP chip will pull more power, but don't look at it for exact numbers if you're trying to measure a system's power. So would it make sense to buy a low power SKU for your system? A lot of home server and small business workloads are relatively low load almost all of the time, with some bursts. So that means the CPU is going to be sitting near that idle power consumption for a lot of the time. And in that case, the CPU won't really matter when it comes to power consumption as idle power is near the same on different SKUs. If you get the high-end SKU, you'll use more power during bursts, but you also get the work done significantly faster during the burst. In some of my testing, the high-performance SKU was nearly 70-80% to 80 faster than the low-performance SKU. But if you don't need that extra performance, the low-power SKU makes a lot of sense with very few downsides. It'll use less power for almost every task, and if you run a bursty workload, it'll be more efficient due to its lower clock speed when running the burst task, although it will take longer. I also did a little bit of testing with an E5 2680 V2, which is a one generation newer platform that uses the same socket. Not all of the LGA 2011 systems are compatible, but if it is, the newer version is a more efficient. So if there's multiple generations your platform can take, I'd say try to get the latest generation in almost all cases. What about workloads where the CPU isn't idle all the time? The low power SKU seems like it would make a lot of sense if it can be enough for your workload, as it saves you power if you don't need the extra performance of the high performance chip. But one thing is, if you want the performance later on as your needs grow, you can't get them without replacing the chip. What if you could get the best of both worlds? Oftentimes, the different SKUs of CPUs are running the same silicon or very similar silicon under the hood, with configuration being the major change in the power consumption and performance of the chips. 
So you should be able to just adjust it in software like they do in the firmware of the chip to lower the performance or maybe even raise the performance between the chips. So one chip could be both a low power chip and a high performance chip. Unfortunately, with almost all servo CPUs, you can't make the low power chip into a high performance chip. They limit the max clock speed, power consumption, and core count on the chip so it can't be overclocked or unlocked to a higher power. But the high power SKUs can typically be very easily turned down. Unfortunately though, a lot of LGA 2011 server motherboards don't give you too many knobs to tune when it comes to changing this. There's no like power consumption watt number for the chip that you can easily turn down. So if you want to lower the power consumption, you have to do things like turning off turbo boost, limiting cores, and if you want to limit clock speed on my board, you'd have to go into Windows and limit the maximum clock speed through the power consumption menu. And I tried doing that, and I ran quite a few more tests of my high performance chip with its clock speed turned down. And actually, with the clock speed turned down to a maximum of 60%, the CPU had a higher performance test in my number with slightly lower power consumption compared to the low power CPU. My high performance chip can be configured in a way that is very similar to the low power chip when it comes to efficiency and performance. And all I need to do is just kind of configure the system and I can use the same physical chip for both my high performance needs and my low power need. Unfortunately though, there's a reasonable amount of tweaking that goes into setting this up. And there's no easy just change to profile on the system I was using. So this means you have to do a good amount of tweaking and working through. So now you're sacrificing time of whoever's managing the server or working with it. So buying that chip gives you pretty much all the other chips in the SKU below it if you want to do the configuration. So which of these options makes more sense? I think a lot of it depends on the operator and how much tweaking they want you to do. If they're a home user like me where they like tweaking and playing with systems and turning the knobs, going for the high-end chip and turning it down as needed is likely a good option. But if you want plug and play, especially for something like a business use case, try to pet the best CPU you can for your workload. It often is hard to guess exactly how much CPU performance you need, but I'd say normally steer on the higher side if you can't. You get a bit less efficiency, but it likely means that your server is going to be able to do what you need it to do faster, and it will be able to sustain more of a workload increase than a lower power CPU. I hope this video was a useful comparison of power consumption and performance. I personally am using a low power CPU in my main server, because a lot of tasks actually use a whole lot less CPU power than you'd expect. Things like a NAS share really doesn't need very much. And idle VMs don't need much CPU at all either. So you can get away with having a fairly slow CPU with a relatively high amount of VMs. Let me know what you think of this video and what CPU configuration you're running in your server in the comments below.